Uh, so we've got questions, so don't forget to type in your questions in the box uh, for discussions just after our last speaker of the evening, uh, Gianfranco Divana. Uh, Gianfranco is uh, very experienced at using contrast, over 20 years of experience as well. He started off as an application specialist and then developed experience as a contrast expert and now a trainer in the field of contrast used in many countries and also utilizing your scanners on how to optimize them best to visualize these contrast agents. And he has some tips and tricks for us. So, uh, John Franco, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It is a pleasure to be here. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the tips needed to perform a successful contrast ultrasound examination. So um, let's talk about Sonoview. Uh, what is the structure of Sonoview? Sonoview is a phospholipid shell embracing an inert gas. Uh, this combination is the whole secret of contrast ultrasound. So the phospholipid shell is flexible and elastic and oscillates. And the sulfur hexafluoride is five times heavier than air. So uh, the phospholipid shell, the elastic uh, phospholipid shell will give an enhancement and the gas will take the responsibility of giving you an, a long time examination. So it will keep uh, up to six minutes in time. Another thing characteristic of the Sonoview is that once you do, you apply a low MI, the bubbles will oscillate. That oscillation is the one that will be um, detected by the machine. I will explain more later. Some of you is also a blood, pure blood pool agent. So bubbles do not go through the interstitial spaces. Uh, they remain in the vascular space. So it is a pure blood pool agent. So it keeps going on and on and on until it's elimination, which means that after 15 minutes, everything will be gone because the gas gets eliminated by the lungs. Uh, by the breathing, and the uh, lipids get metabolized in mainly in the liver. So in 15 minutes, everything will be completely gone, eliminated. Let's talk about the concentration, okay? That is the most important factor of some of you, and I will explain that again. So one, once you do the shaking, you will be creating bubbles, uh, a huge amount of bubbles, up to 500 million micro bubbles per milliliter. The majority of bubbles will be of the uh, diameter of 2.5 micron. The requirement from most of the contrast, in, uh, contrast ultrasound is to be below five. In our case, the majority is 2.5, so it's very little. The amount of gas injected is very low. Uh, for a normal 2.4 milliliter injection, uh, the amount of gas injected will be 20 microliters. The um, viscosity and the osmolarity is very close to blood, and the stability after the preparation is six hours. Six hours at room temperature. That should mean between 15 and 25 degrees. So remember, there's no air in here. It's gas. And the, the phospholipids will be solved in the saline. So uh, this is the most important part of the preparation. So you should keep it in the vial as long as you can, because there's no other way to remix within this six hours. There's no way to remix the product if you do not have gas inside. So keep the gas as long as you can. Once you do the preparation, just leave the vial on the table. Do not keep mixing it. Do not keep it in your hand. It is lipids. So they will change behavior with the temperature. So try not to heat them up. That's why, I, as I said before, 15 to 25 degrees. So just shake it. The first time is 20 seconds, and then put the vial on the table and leave it there until you will need it later on. I will explain as well. So what happens in the machine? The machine probe will send waves that will hit the bubbles. Remember, they oscillate. And that oscillation will come back to the probe. That's the way the machine will determine that that signal is bubble or blood flow instead of tissue, because the oscillation from tissue will be, will be very low. So that's the best way uh, of detecting contrast. The machine is doing a great job. 
Another thing talking about the restaurants, restaurants is that um, bubbles resonate at a low MI. If you see the MI indication, in this case, the nonlinear response is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is the limit where you will start breaking bubbles. So in that lim in that range, you will the bubbles will oscillate the most. Obviously, if you increase the MI, the bubbles will compress and then dis get destroyed. But machines will keep the contrast examination within this range. So talking about what is influencing a good image, the MI is an important thing. Yes, absolutely. It's transmitted power. The gain is also important because it is um, um, returning signal. So it's gain amplification. And you need to keep that in mind as well. In mind as well, the focus is also an important factor because the focus is a stressing point for the bubbles. So, in cases you have, for example, in liver, you want to characterize a focal level lesion, you need to keep the focus below the lesion. The injection rate is also very important because it depends on the con it will influence concentration, and then you ne it needs to be a quick injection. The, a new US machine, a new contrast machine is also another thing that you need to keep in mind because you might need new settings, you, need, you might need to get used to that. But is that all? There's another one, there's one extra one which is very important and it is the uh, shaking of the product. Shake vigorously is the wording you will get in the leaflet. That's the the right where, way to shake the uh, the contrast because you would you need to create millions and millions of bubbles, so the agitation guarantees a homogeneous concentration. Remember that um, everything needs to be there for the machine to detect them, and uh, you will have many different bubble sizes. So uh, that will be the only way that the machine can detect the blood flow. So the mixing is crucial for a good and strong enhancement. Keep that in mind. Shake every time you extract it. So let's talk about the agitation of the product. Shaking vigorously, remember. So once you do the shaking, you will increase the concentration of bubbles. Then you inject it in the, in the vein and you see that the concentration of the bubbles will decrease in time because bubbles get accumulated or eliminated and things like that. So you will have uh, an optimal uh, timing between four and six minutes. But there's some factors influencing the enhancement. The EMI is influencing the preparation, the way you prepare, the administration, the way you inject it, and the elimination rate of the, of the body. Those are all factors co influencing the con contrast concentration. Let's talk about the machine settings, uh, mechanical index and gain, very important uh, parameters that you need to consider. Mechanical index is transmitted power, so it will destroy the bubbles if you increase it too much, while the gain is receiving amplification, so it does not destroy the bubbles. Um, on the, for, for example, on the right-hand side, you can see the TGCs, and they're gradually increasing. That TGC stands for time gain compensation. And it means that on the superficial parts, you will have less amplification than on the lower part. That will help you with the imaging as well. So um, let's talk about uh, mechanical index. Um, adapt DMI based on need. So sometimes you might have uh, difficulties in imaging, cirrhosis, big lesions, deep lesions, and uh, big patients. Any difficulties you have on, t on 2D, which is high MI, will be multiplied in low MI in contrast mode. So try to compensate for that. Try to plan before and always decide based on the 2D settings and your scanning, obviously your scanning difficulties. So for example, in this case, you have on the left, very dark imaging, very difficult to detect, or the characterizing lesions in the lower part and very close to the diaphragm. If instead you increase the MI, so it goes deeper 
in the liver. You will have, you will be touching more bubbles in the deeper part of the liver, and then you will be seeing more signals in the deeper part of the liver. So that's one thing you can do as well. Regarding the dosage, it is a critical thing because uh, the tendency today is to decrease the amount of contrast injected, uh, maybe half a dosage or uh, less than that. That you need to be careful. I I would recommend if you're a beginner, you're starting with contrast ultrasound, keep to the recommended dosage so you are not missing, for example, on the late phase. Uh, if you inject, inject less dosage than normal, it is sometimes difficult to get a very strong late phase. In late phase, you need to have a good parenchyma surrounding the lesion. So try not to do that and don't risk missing a lesion. So uh, optimize your imaging so you have greatest or the, the maximum brightness all along until the diaphragm. Remember that if needed, uh, you can repeat the injection as many times as you like. There's no maximum limit. Another uh, recommendation, sometimes you have multiple lesions, you want to characterize, characterize them all. So the best approach would be to focus on the most important or the bigger lesion. So you have the lesion in one plane, scan the one plane and do everything from arterial to portal to late phase. Then you clear up, and then you do the second injection on the other lesions, and then you keep doing that. On the right-hand side, you can see the probe hitting more or less the whole spectrum of the scanning plane. And that, that means that the probe signal is touching all the bubbles. If instead you put an angle or the patient is breathing, you will have up and downs or lower uh, enhancement in the scanning plane. So keep the probe as much as you can directly on top of the area of interest so you have the best enhancement. Also, practice your scanning approach. It is very uh, good to do some planning before. So I normally base everything on, this, on the 2D. Okay, you have a big patient or deep lesion, very difficult to scan lesion, very difficult section. It is a good idea to plan the way you're going to do the contrast uh, examination. So the lesion position, the if it's more than one lesion, if the patient is breathing, the breathing movement is a problem for most of the characterizations because you will have the lesion moving. And then remember that the if you're hitting different uh, bubbles, you will be having different enhancements. So... Try to ask the patient to hold breath while, especially after some seconds after the injection, so you have the arterial phase, which is very strong. Then patient can breathe and then inspire again and then hold it. So you could record the portal phase in that example and then you keep going like that. So try to be optimized for the examination. Another recommendation is when the machine is ready, and in contrast mode, so you're waiting for the nurse to extract the injection. Avoid extracting the contrast before you're ready with to be scanning. So it happens that uh, you're scanning and you say, okay, let's in inject contrast, and then she's extracting. Yeah, avoid keeping the contrast in the syringe because there's no way to recombine the gas inside, and you will have less concentration. So. Instead, do everything you need to do. Sometimes you make sure that you're already ready for the contrast injection and then ask the nurse to extract. And then pick up from the table, shake again for five seconds, extract only the amount that you will be injecting and inject immediately. Try to do every time the same process as quickly as you can, picking up from the table, shaking, extracting, and injecting. That will guarantee that you have the maximum enhancement. How to inject? In a fast injection. That means I normally recommend 2.4 milliliters in two seconds and immediately followed by saline injection of two, three seconds as well. So in four or five seconds, you will have one full package that will give you a strong arterial phase in a, a strong characterization. If you eventually need extra help, BRACO is offering free visits upon request to assist you on preparation, trainings, 
uh, if you have members in your department that need training or starting with contrast, setting optimi optimizations, this is what I do as a job. I just follow customers and then improve the settings and improve the way they're scanning and the way they're preparing the product and injecting the product. So uh, at the end of this webinar, you will have a survey automatically coming up. Just uh, fill up your details if eventually you need it, uh, you need help, help, and then a uh, BRACO representative will contact you. I have finished my presentation. Thank you so much for, uh, for your attention. Great, John Franco, thank you very much uh, for all those uh, tips and uh, tricks. Uh, and, uh, on that note, I'd just like to agree with you that getting the right settings and patient preparation is so key, so you get an optimal examination. Otherwise, you might be disheartened if it's your first few times. So your help is uh, greatly needed. Um, and just wanted to add in a bit of dose. I think um, we tend to give a bit less now for the liver, uh, around one to one. 0.2 mils. And I just wanted to say that if you give too much in the first go, you might get a bit of attenuation so that you're, if you, you might get from the bubbles itself, so you can't see as deep into the liver uh, the first go. So as you said uh, very uh, astutely that you should start with a lower dose first and then build it up uh, as we go on through the examination. Yep. So thank you very much uh, for that. We do have one question uh, for Martin. Uh, Martin uh, is from Marta. Uh, says she'd like to ask if you had any experience in using Sonovue with patients after kidney and liver transplants. Um, yes, uh, I guess the question is related to to safety. I I, I assume, or in general, for efficacy. I mean, yeah, the, I mean, there's there's a lot of experience with liver and and renal transplantation. I I mean. Um, Liver is in label, kidney is still off label. So, as uh, as uh, as, as Baraco, <laughs> I need to mention this. Uh, and um, but um, there's no doubt that they are very useful indication for transplants in, in general, just because you can uh, excellently um, assess the, the perfusion of the transplant, which is a, a key key aspect. And for for safety, it's 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 the same. I mean, there there are no restrictions related to liver or, or renal diseases, and this is also true for liver transplantations or kidney transplantation. Thank you, Chris. I don't know whether you wanted to add to that because you've done quite a bit of uh, research uh, into transplant kidneys. Yeah, so um, we've got a, a large um, transplant unit at um, Imperial the Renal Transplants. That is, so we've done. Again, 15, 20 years of imaging of uh, transplants, and it's fantastic for looking for um, perfusion, for infarcts, for assessing the uh, focal um, renal lesions, and brilliant for assessing Bosniac cysts. Takes it into a new strat stratosphere where you see these tiny septa and uh, nodules in the in the uh, um, cyst that you cannot see on um, MR and CT. And of course, they um, they don't want you they don't want to use CT or MR because they're young patients and they've got um, potential nephrotoxic agents. So uh, they usually would want a, a contrast enhanced um, ultrasound before any other imaging. Um, so we use it lots and lots to, for problem solving mainly, uh, looking at perfusion, infarcts, focal lesions, pseudo tumors, and uh, Bosniac cysts. Very Great, good. thank you for. Very and <clears throat> and non-nephrotoxics are very uh, very good uh, and uh, for performing it. Thank you, Chris. Um, perhaps just on the bit of safety, Martin. I think one question which is always on everybody's mind, and I can tell already from the audience, is uh, what happens in the pregnant woman? Can we use it <laughs> in <laughs> pregnancy? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course, I can just say what is uh, what is officially stated. So the official thing, and it's still true. There, there's not much experience, as with all uh, other contrast media or other drugs in in, in pregnant patients, of course, or lactating mm -hmm. patients. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, that's that's the official uh, uh, message, and and to be be careful with that. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, there are some ex examination and in, in some cases, uh, Dirk Klebert uh, from Munich has 
has done some examination. So, so what is obviously evident that these bubbles don't pass the placenta. So from that, that is uh, pretty, pretty clear. Uh, and there, there are no uh, side effects reported so far, but as, as of course, the numbers are uh, is very low. And sure. look. Thank you, Martin, for that. Uh, I think, uh, I think some of the very, very scant uh, data uh, shows that it's actually quite safe. Uh, yes. uh, I pregnancy. mean, in general, of course, if yeah. you need to do a kind of imaging modality yeah. uh, compared to other, the other options you have, uh, CT yes. or what, with radiation dose, there's no doubt which, <laughs> yes. which would be more risky. Well, okay. Yeah, so I think so the, the benefits uh, against the risks, uh, definitely. Uh, thank you. Um, just coming... Chris, uh, um, just for, for you with contrast liver lesions, I mean, uh, you're speaking to the converted. Do you contrast uh, liver, use contrast for all your liver lesions? Um, as I said at the beginning, if it's got a classic, classic appearance of a, a little hemangioma, uh, a young person, then I, I wouldn't. Um, but if they've got a known malignancy, primary malignancy, uh, then uh, I would have a lower um, uh, threshold for doing it. Um, but again, you have to put it in context of um, uh, the, the patient's condition, whether they've got weight loss, fever, constitutional symptoms. But if it's a classic hemangioma or a classic cyst, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Um, and um, sometimes, of course, we get lesions, but we don't know if the patient's got hepatitis B, C or risk factors. So I have to say, um, if there is clinical concern, then we would be happy to do a contrast in ultrasound at your request. So I'll put yeah. it back in there. Cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very important to triage the patient, uh, as yeah, exactly, you say. Yeah. And uh, would you, for sort of practical purposes, do you normally do your lists all and bring all your patients back for one contrast list, or do you do them as and when uh, you see the need? To yeah, so we um, um we we when we come across patients, outpatients, GP patients, uh, we found if we find a lesion, we do it then and there. So you explain to the patients uh, they've got a lesion in the liver, and at this point they usually fly around the room with a, a sort of panic and stress <laughs> attack. Uh, and you say, but we can do, put a little cannula in, give you some dye that's really really safe, and we can work out here and now what it is. Uh, and um, all the patients I've come across are very, very happy to th then do it there rather than wait four weeks or more and radiation and anxiety and cost and um, potential uh, nephrotoxicity. So uh, it's a great way. It's a fantastic technique for sorting it out then and there. Uh, and in the vast majority, you get the answer immediately. And you can say with confidence this is a benign um, hemangioma or FNH, no further imaging is necessary. And we know that the vast majority of incidental liver lesions are benign. Now, of course, uh, I've come across malignant lesions, but even then, the patients want to know what it is and they want to get into the system if they've got something nasty. Um, so if if they did, if I did find a, a malignant lesion, then I can take them around to CT immediately for a staging scan of chest, abdomen and pelvis to see if we can find the primary. Uh, and that colon cancer I, I showed you that looked like a bit, looked like a hemangioma superficially. Uh, they did have a colon cancer on, on the CT when I took them round. And again, I then email the relevant clinicians and get them straight into the system. Uh, so no waiting. So either way, um, the patients are happier. Yeah. yeah, much better, much better for patient management. Thank you. Better part patient journey, as they say in the trade nowadays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, yes, couldn't agree more. But just on a practicality side, I think if you're just starting off, be nice to have two or three contrasts in a row so you get uh, the experience of doing it uh, instead of just sporadically. Uh, oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah. And pick easy mm -hmm. ones like... Um, uh, Jan Franco said, "Pick easy ones <laughs> to start with, so you don't get disillusioned with tr tricky cases, or, or or sometimes larger patients present yes. more challenges as well." Yes, thank you. Uh, still, uh, no questions. 
Yeah, but I have a question for Joe. Thank you. Jiao, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Um, you know, Doppler is getting pretty good, and with microvascular imaging these days, there have been sort of reports that uh, that, in contrast, is uh, even more sensitive for looking at the the vascular flow and leaks, etc. Well, what's your experience uh, with uh, using combining sort of microvascular imaging uh, as well as uh, contrast? Is, is it helpful? Uh yeah, we've been doing some uh, uh, a lot of research uh, on uh, carotids, mm -hmm. uh, car carotid plaque volume uh, that we use contrast before, and uh, peripheral arteries as well. So when we do we do duplex of lower limb arteries, but we always find we re really struggle to see calf arteries or even pedal arteries. And we did some uh, uh, research before with 3D, looking at just below knee arteries. And we had some really good uh, uh, outcomes looking at that. So uh, so yeah, there's other op options. We actually, we can use contrast, not, not just for EVARs or endoleaks, but for carotid plaque volume mm -hmm. measure and yeah. uh, lower limb arteries as well yeah some good outcomes of that yeah thank you so yes yeah, very very encouraging uh, <clears throat> with the use of contrast uh, to help us with the diagnosis with all that in mind just a uh, question for generally everybody here is um, why is the uptake of use of contrast been a little bit slow in the uk and uh, it's not why do you think that is uh, maybe joe i can has there been some trials and tribulations uh, or difficulties uh, that may have sort of hindered? I think in the vascular area, I think we just need more research on it. I think just to just to show that we really can use it. Uh, yes, because there's only some other some more options we can. Because at the moment, uh, we're still doing carotid arteries, and the doctors are happy uh, with that. But I guess in, in the future, yes, maybe, yes, definitely. Think. And it's always like uh, for peripheral arteries, if you if you use contrast, there's like, again, there's a cost effective uh, effect. It's like mm. on a way or not using CT as well or MR. So, yeah. But we still yeah. need a lot of uh, research on it, I, I would say. Great. I think uh, more webinars like this and more encouragement and Encouraging data that's coming through certainly uh, will get people excited about contrast and how easy and safe it is uh, to perform as well. Uh, we are up to eight o'clock here, which is uh, the time end of our webinar. I'm just going to really like to thank uh, our hosts and all the speakers uh, who've really provided such really excellent talks and uh, very encouraging talks as I learn something new every time I listen to all of you. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you to Gianfranco and Jerome, who's hosting. And I think uh, Jerome likes to say a few closing words. So, and thank you all the participants as well for joining us this evening. Yeah, I, what I have to say is thank you very much, Adrian, on, uh, on our turn as well. Uh, thanks to Chris, Joe, Martin, and uh, Gianfranco. Uh, thanks to the audience, obviously, for, for the great participation. And as we mentioned before, the webinar has been recorded and it will be made uh, available very uh, soon online, and we shall uh, keep uh, the participant posted. And by this, we wish you a very good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.